is this? Who are you? <laughs> What, what is the purpose of that? Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Rob Built. I'm your host, Rob, and uh, today we've got a very special edition of Rob Built. We are at my glam site in Arizona right now, and I'm gonna give you a couple of tours of my different listings. It is 6,000 feet of elevation, so it is very possible that I can't breathe right now. Wow, how fast, do I really talk that fast? For all the people in the comments that say slow down, I'm sorry. I am going to be doing a tour of my different listings. So we're gonna start with my bell tent, which I call the bell, pretty on the nose. After that, I'm gonna do a tour of my yurt. It's a Mongolian hut. The yurt itself is about 700 square feet. Our bell tent is anywhere from two to 300 square feet. It's 16 feet in diameter, so we're about to step inside. Before we do, do me a huge favor. If you like the content that I put out, if you like me, if you like my, my daughter, Isla, do it for Isla. If you wouldn't mind hitting the like button and the subscribe button down below, it really helps me with the YouTube algorithm, which we know is very, very important. And uh, I'm gonna be leaving links to the listings down in my description below for where you can book these different stays. If you wouldn't mind, click that little listing, go to the top right, there's gonna be a little heart there. Click that heart if you have a heart. And I know you have a heart because you're watching this video right now. So we're about to head into the bell right now, but before we do, I actually wanted to tell you why I'm even here. I've been doing consultations now for the past couple of months. Uh, I'm up to about 10 to 15 a week now, really ramping up that side of the business. I teach people how to build tiny houses, how to build tiny houses in Joshua Tree, California, and how to set up glamping experiences like the one you're about to see. And so after consulting with different people and getting a lot of encouragement from all of you, I am finally creating a course on how to set up your own glamping business. And I'm super excited about that. So you're gonna see different content about that coming out in the next couple of weeks, but I hope in the next month, depending on when this comes out, those will be ready for all of your beautiful eyeballs. So what say we uh, head inside the bell tent? Let's do it, come on. Actually, I lied. Uh, we're not going inside yet because I just wanted to talk about the kind of the off-grid component of this. So back here, I'm not sure if you can see that. We have a bathroom out there. So you take a shower in there and the water drains into the ground. Then we have a composting toilet over there. And then we have our solar. We actually have a panel set up on each side depending on where the sun is in the day because uh, that's how solar panels work. They need sun to work, right? Right? Um, so we have a solar panel right here. When the sun is in this part of the sky, I think scientifically that makes sense. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is the science. The sun goes over here. It, it shines its beautiful little rays over here. This or that panel will then feed into a battery. And then that battery goes into an inverter that basically provides basic, uh, basically provides basic. That's how that works, right? It basically provides basic power. That's, I mean, it, that sentence is true. It provides basic power to some of the simple amenities that we have on the inside. You'll see we have string lights, we have a mini fridge in there, and then somewhere for you to charge your precious, precious phone. So with that, let's head inside. For real this time, I promise. We are inside of our bell tent here, and I wanted to give you a quick tour. Um, we're gonna cut to B-roll right. <laughs> Very small as you can see, but we've really tried to optimize the space as much as humanly possible in here. So let's just talk about the VoIBs, okay? So we've got string lights all around here. In terms of the off-grid capabilities that we offer to our different guests, we keep it very light. So we are able to offer very simple fridge power, very simple string lights, and then you can come and you can charge your phone because hashtag the social dilemma. And you, can, you wanna check your Instagram, you wanna Instagram while you're out here. We're providing that service for you. Now, but one thing is that we don't always have super solar days. Does that make sense? Checks out.com. It's not super sunny some days. And so when it's super gloomy, then uh, the lights or the solar power may go out. So for those kind of days, we do heavily, heavily caveat to all of our guests that the solar may go out and that's just something that they have to be ready for. Now, even if we caveat that, guests tend to be a little annoyed by it, but that is the nature of the beast. Whenever you have a very simple solar setup, you really have to make compromises. But we do try to leave things in here like little, little lamps that can work them. Lamp. Boom. And this is so that they can basically walk outside, go to the bathrooms on the outside. And then down here we have some pretty much bare essentials. We've got a little a little rack here. A very real plant. Very it keeps it real with me. We got a dog bowl because we are dog friendly. And then we have a first aid kit, ladder ball. Kind of basic. You can slide your luggage right under this bed. So again, there's not a lot of space. We do put up to four people in here. I'm sitting on a little memory foam floor pad. We've got one right here. Uh, if my cameraman gets out of the way, we've also got one right here too. These fold out. So couples can't, like one couple or two different people can sleep on the floor. And then we've got our full size bed up here. Our full size bed is a memory foam bed. So this is where we really start to define glamping versus camping. You know, a lot of the times we've 
had people say, I don't know if I would call this glamping. And I'm like, you've got a mini fridge and literally a memory foam mattress. I don't think that how on earth can anyone ever consider something like that camping? Like, and of course we're not even in a, we're not in a vinyl. We're not in a, Hey, what are we not in? A, we're not in a, we're not in a vinyl tent. We're in a canvas tent. I mean, this is like a very, very thick canvas tent. The look inside of this is, you know, it's so much nicer than your typical camping tent. Well, it's nicer than a canting tent too, but it's also nicer than a camping tent. And uh, I think you walk in here and you kind of have a feeling for the vibe that we're going for. We probably spend too much money on throw pillows and blankets in here, but that is part of the experience. And then also in a camping tent, you're typically just, you might have something like a little heater like this. This is something that we do provide to our guests, but you know, we really try to, oh, excuse you we really try to elevate the experience by having a cast iron stove so this sucker right here this is what's called like a caboose stove i think and uh you can actually put fire logs in here everything this is rated for a 1500 square foot house so this yurt is probably like i think two to three hundred square feet it's 16 feet in diameter let's uh run the calculations and post on what that actually is but this is rated for a 1500 square foot house and i'll tell you what when this thing is burning when you've got three four five logs in here it is toasty in here here in the desert it gets down to zero degrees, 10 degrees in the winter. And then it also gets super, super hot in the summer. Hashtag uh, desert temperament. So something like this really comes in handy. And I think probably my favorite part of the experience is kind of reading the reviews that people leave and talk about a very simple glamping experience like this. I've seen a lot of reviews where people say that, you know, they cozied up next to the fire with their family and they got to play Jenga or Sorry or Connect Four, whatever it is, next to the fire with their kids. You know, also the stars here at night are really, really nice. So people leave very touching reviews and talk about how they've, you know, disconnected from the real world and connected with their families in new ways. So really for me, it while it is a really great profitable structure to have, something that I really love about this is the ability to help people make memories, which is so cheesy, but it really is true. This is really why I'm into it because, you know, we've hosted well over three, 400 people at this point. And I would say like 90 to 95% percent of people are genuinely enthralled very thrilled with their experience here the only time that people are not thrilled with the experience are people who don't read the listing where we list out every single component of glamping and what they can actually expect so people come here sometimes expecting to get the Hilton and then when they find out that they have to poop outside they're not happy about that I'm not happy when I have to poop outside but at least I know that I have to do it right you know what I'm saying uh, so yeah I would say most people are very happy with the glamping experience but you know we really try to prep people really try to caveat them for what they're getting here so this is a very quick tour of the bell tent if you're interested in learning about the financials in this let me know in the comments down below I I will say very quickly that we own two of these and between this one and the other one that we own we grossed about nine thousand dollars on both of these and so um you know if you want to know about the specifics what our costs are and everything like that let me know i'll do a deep dive on that all right so i hope you enjoyed the tour of my bell tent that's one of two that i have um you know i kind of breezed through that quick because we're on very limited time out here we've been shooting for eight hours a day on these courses that i mentioned earlier so we're kind of in and out on these which again you know the raw built channel is always kind of scrambling anyway, so why not carry that through at my own glamp site? My glamp site is something that I've had for going on two years now. I have two partners on that. We all get each other's vision on that. We all click and that's something that I definitely recommend. If you're ever wanting to get into the glamping business, don't do it alone. Find people that kind of understand your vision, that want to do the same thing that you want to do, and then together you can solve whatever problem comes your way. So Ryan, Clint, love you guys. Okay, and that concludes today's episode of Raw Built. Right behind me, you're gonna see this Airstream right here. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to shoot it, but if you want me to do a video on the Airstream, leave me a comment down below and let me know that this is something that interests you. The more people that want me to do something, the more likely I am to do it because easily influenced. So if you wanna know more about the financial deep dives of something like this, again, let me know and I will do that. But for now, I hope you enjoyed my glam site. Again, I'll leave my listings down in the comments below. Be sure to heart those listings, book your stay, and come stay at Grand Glamping. It's, it's my passion project. It's something that me and my partners have been putting together for the past two years now and I really want to share it with you so with that I leave you with this bye <laughs>